Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Welcome to the show, y'all. Now, look here. Check this out now. You know, Lisa and Drew got caught by Pops. You know, James, he thought somebody else was in the room because he heard Lisa so animated with having phone sex with Drew. He had no idea. But when he got off the phone with Drew, he saw Lisa's body even though she had on the negligee, the robe type negligee, that tied off at the top, it was sheer. The material was sheer so he could see through it. And he could see her body. He could see her breasts. He could see her hips. He could see her nipples. He could see her print through her clothes, her panties. And he was embarrassed because he had interrupted her in the middle of doing something with his son. He thought that she was in the room with someone else because she was so animated. But he couldn't get the image of her out of his mind. He could not. So as he sat in his room, he thought about Lisa. He thought about what she looked like. And he thought about his son. And he said what any father would say. He's got a good one. She's a beautiful woman. And as hard as he tried, he couldn't put out of his mind what she looked like and what she sounded like. Because now, Instead of him thinking that he was looking out for his son and she was in the room with somebody else, he was thinking about his son's girlfriend in the wrong way. In the wrong way. So the next day came. And Lisa was coming through the house. She had had a nursing outfit on because she at this point she had graduated and she had gotten a job at the hospital. And she was on her way to work. And when she was coming through she, through the kitchen, she had uh, her coffee tumbler in her hand and she was getting some coffee that he had freshly made. And as she was pouring it in her tumbler, get, headed out the door, getting ready to head out the door, she spoke to him. She said, hey, Pops, how you doing? And he was still embarrassed. He's like, hey, how you doing? And he couldn't even look at her. And she said, don't worry about that yesterday. Don't worry about that. I should have put something up on the door. I should have locked the door, something. She was looking at it as if, you know, it was her fault. And he was so embarrassed, he didn't want to talk about it. And he started, he said, it's okay, it's okay. We don't even need to talk about that. And that made her just like funny, laugh at him because it was funny. It was like, are you blushing? You're blushing. And she said, oh, that's cute. Like that, right? She didn't think that it was anything other than a father embarrassed by hearing his son and his girlfriend having sex, so to speak. And he's like, it'll never happen again. And she was like, well, we'll be careful in the future. We'll be more careful. I'll make sure and lock the door. He's like, no, just let me know. I won't even be in the house. And she said, you know, you have to go through all of that. We'll just keep it down and so on and so forth. So when she was going out the door, her back was to him and he looked up and he saw her body in a different way. He saw her body in a different way. And she was going out the door. He put his head down in shame because he knew that he should not have been looking at her that way. So when his son called later that day, he took the call because Lisa was still at work. So James and Drew are talking on the phone and he was like, Telling his, uh, Drew was telling his dad, he said, man, my bad for that the other day. You know, I mean, yesterday, uh, it won't happen again. You know, we'll be careful and all this and that, right? And he was telling his son, he's like, man, 
yeah, y'all need to be more careful. She was loud. I thought somebody was in there and all this and that. He said, man, she's a beast. And Drew was laughing and thinking about it like, yeah, you know, that's Lisa. She's very aggressive. She's very aggressive, you know. And so James asked me, what? What were you doing? What? What? How was she? What, what? How did you get her like that? What were you doing with her? He said I was just talking, but she had she got toys. Drew was telling his daddy that she got toys. He's like toys. He had dildos. She's got dildos. And James, you know, he was, he knew what dildos were, but he never had any experience with dildos or seeing them anything like that other than on TV or something, you know, in a movie. He had never actually seen or held one in his hand. So after he got off the phone with Drew, he violated. He crossed the line. He went into the room. Now he's snooping. And he goes through her drawers very carefully, very methodically, and he finds the dildos. He finds a couple of dildos, and he looks at them. And he sniffs it. And now he knows that he's crossed the line, the point of no return. He's imagining being with her. Doesn't matter about his son. Doesn't matter about that they're in love. He's imagining being with Lisa himself now. So here's what happens. Weeks go by. Now, he's snooping. Whenever she's at home by herself, he would rush back faster than it would normally take, hoping that he could catch them in the act again. So one day he does, and he gets back to the, to the house, and he quietly opens the door to the car, quietly opens the door to the house, and he's in the house. And he hears them. He hears Lisa. And so he tiptoes to the room. And he puts his ear to the door and he listens. And he slowly tries to open the door, but the door is locked because he has a key. So he slowly unlocks the door and he pushes the door open just enough to see her in the room. And she's laying on the bed. Her back is arched. And she's killing it. She has the phone laying on the nightstand on intercom. So James, he just stares at her and he looks at her. Now he's fully involved. He sees Lisa not as his son's girlfriend, but as someone that he wants to conquer, someone he wants to possess. But he knows that if he crosses that line, that this is going to damage the relationship that he has with his son. So he resists. He resists. And the part of him resisting was that he tried to find a woman to spend time with. And he did, but he couldn't get Lisa out of his mind. He would visualize her body, her taunt body. He would visualize and listen and, and, and tune into like how she sounded when she would be on the phone and what she would be saying to Drew and imagining that she would be saying it to him. Come on now. So one day, he can't take it anymore. So when he opens the door, he gets bold and he pushes it open and he stands there and he listens and he watches and she glances up and she sees him and he puts his finger to his lips, motioning for her to don't say anything. And he stands there and he watches while she continues to satisfy herself with Drew on the phone. So 
So James, he walks over to her. And while he walks to her, he's taking off his clothes. She sits up in the bed and she looks at him. She reaches for the phone and she tells Drew, I got to go. I think somebody's coming. Call me back. And she hangs up abruptly. Drew's not thinking anything about it. She hangs up the phone and she sets it down on the nightstand. She's sitting up in the bed. She places the dildo beside the phone. And she sits up and she spreads her legs even wider. And James, he walks towards her. At this point, he's totally naked. And she turns towards him. And she stands up beside him. He's naked and she's naked now. She reaches down and she touches him. And James is ashamed. He said, I can't do this. But he doesn't walk away. He stands there. He doesn't walk away. But she's holding on to him. She's squeezing him in her hands. And she pulls him to her. And they lay down. And you know what happens next. You know what happens next. And when they're done, they just lay there in silence. Without saying one word. Without saying one word. And then the phone rings. She looks over and it's Drew. James gets up, exits the room. She gets on the phone. Hey, baby, what you doing? He tells her nothing. He says, everything okay? She said, yeah, everything's fine. He's asking, who was that? She said, it was your pops again. He was like, was the door locked? Like, yeah, but I was too into it. I couldn't stop. I said, I had to get off the phone with you. You know how you get me. So he laughs about it. Yeah. I know. And he says, that's my puss, ain't it, baby? She tells him it's yours. The deceit. The deception. That's going on here. It's on a whole nother level. Now this goes on for months. For months. She's having phone sex with Drew. And she's actually having sex with James. And she's in the middle of this triangle. She's visiting Drew at the jail. Sometimes James at the prison, excuse me, sometimes James even goes to the prison with her to visit. And they sit and they talk like a family. But they're a family with secrets. And Drew has no idea what's going on. But one day, one day, at visit, he notices something. He notices how Lisa touches James's hand at the table. See, it's those subtle things that people in the free world don't pay attention to, that people in prison pay attention to, y'all. We notice the little things, the little things that tell the big story, the little things that give us all the insight that we need. You know how people say the, the, the devil's in the details? Well, the way she touched James's hand was with care, tenderness. And Drew noticed that. Drew noticed that because she had never done that before. Now, he understood, okay, she's living at the house with him. Maybe, you know what I'm saying, that she's gotten close to uh, his father, you know what I'm saying, in that way, of a fatherly way. But that touch says something else. And that touch 
could only say something else if Drew already had that in his mind, that filter, that that touch was seen through. It told Drew that something is going on here. Something more than what I'm being told. So when Drew went back after the visit, he talked about it with his seller. You know, him and his seller over the years, have they've become real close. So he's talking about this to his seller. And he tells his seller he thinks that something more is going on between his father and Lisa, his girlfriend. And his seller tells him, look, man, if it is. Now, listen to me. This is some of the stuff that you're going to hear in prison. Just listen to what I'm going to say, y'all. He tells him, if it is, as long as you keep it in the family. Now, Drew couldn't, he, his mind couldn't wrap around that. His mind, could, because he, he had heard about stuff like that when he was growing up in the neighborhood, you know, uh, things like that going on and, and, you know, girls having two and three dudes, but he had never had to experience anything like that in his life. But now he's thinking about what his son has said. But then his son says, man, I'm just joking. I'm just playing. Your daddy wouldn't do that to you. But he said, think about all this time that she's been out there. You don't think that she's been with somebody. And now Drew has to contemplate this idea that somebody else has been satisfying Lisa. The phone sex, the few times in visit that they're able to sneak into the restroom. None of that is enough for Lisa. Lisa's a very physical woman. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some people need physical contact. The other things, they can work for a little while. The deal those, they can work for a little while. Some people, and Lisa is one of them, she needed to feel the blood pulsing through the veins of a man's penis. She needed to feel the weight of a man on her, behind her, holding her. She needed the scent of a man to make her feel good. To her, the absence of the physicality of the act made her long for it even more. It blinded her to the fact, the idea of being with Drew's father was a violation. She crossed the line. James crossed the line. And the day came to where the guilt ate her alive. Ate her up. It ate her up. And she could no longer participate in this without Drew knowing. Something had to be done. So she told James, she said, look, I think that I'm falling in love with you. But I love your son. Either we tell him and we start our own thing or we end this. I can't continue to do both. Now keep in mind, James is almost twice her age. It's almost twice her age. It's not the point I'm making here. The point I'm making, because age is nothing but a number once you're grown and consenting. Keep that in mind first. But the point I want to make here is this. He should have been the first one to say, I can't do this. And then if it was a situation where he was going to do it, he should have been the first one in that situation to say, we need to tell Drew. 
my son. But that's not what he was on. His loneliness had blinded him to the fact that he had crossed the line. He had wanted what he wanted. He wanted her. And he couldn't tell his son. She was the stronger of the two. So when they sat down, he agreed that we have to, but how? How do you do that? How do you tell your son that's in prison, at least for a few more years, that you're in a relationship with his girlfriend? Check out this next episode, and I'm going to tell you. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.